Hello, Peter Cox here. Again, nice to see you. Together with Mark Thomas, who is, as you will know by now, the author of 99%, the instigator of the 99% organisation movement based around the ideas in his books. Mark, I want to ask you about democracy. It feels increasingly <laughs> under threat from all kinds of things. How concerned are you about it specifically here in the UK? Well, I am very concerned because... Um, Although we have a history of being a well-functioning democracy, we don't have a written constitution and a lot of the things that act as checks and balances on the power of a prime minister and the cabinet uh, are not actually codified and, uh, uh, and it's just accepted that these things will uh, people will behave in certain ways. It's convention, so it, isn't it? It's, it's, I mean, there's, 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 you know, when I, when I learned a little bit about this at school uh, decades ago, that's what they said. They said, you know, the beauty of the British Constitution is it's unwritten, which means that we're all good chaps. I think emphasis on yeah. the word chaps. And nobody would do anything silly and take advantage of the fact that there's actually nothing written down there. There are no rules to break, actually, no written rules. But that's kind of changing now. Well, uh, it's, it's not quite true, I think, to say that there are no written rules, but we don't have a comprehensive written constitution. Right. And I certainly agree with the second part, which is that that's changing. We've got people who think that rules are there to be broken. Oh, yeah. And therefore, oh, yeah. those parts which are purely convention yeah. are, are really under threat at the moment. So, yeah. you know, we, we have in theory a nice system with lots of checks and balances. And, and in the past, it has worked pretty well. And okay. so, you know, it might be frustrating if you're in government because you want to do something and then you find you're blocked by this or you're blocked by that and of course you know people always assume that they're right so the people who absolutely are blocking they always are, know best uh, don't they these people exactly don't they? Yeah. yeah yeah we all do we all do that you know we all think we are our own opinions are right otherwise we wouldn't hold them yeah. but if you're in a position of power and you believe you're right on everything and you believe yeah. that nobody should be challenging you that gets very dangerous so it's really important that we have a well-functioning set of checks and balances in place and we have had. We've had we've got this interesting diagram that's straight out of your book actually. Let's just spend a few moments looking at it because it explains, I think very clearly, um, how the system works as supposed to work. Just talk us through it if you don't mind, Mark. Well, the, the most fundamental part of it is that we are a democracy. And, and what that means is if we don't like the government, we can sack them. So voters elect MPs, MPs select actually the prime minister and the government. And then the government uh, proposes laws which are scrutinized by parliament and assuming they get through parliament then the civil service enacts them and that produces certain outcomes in the world and has effects on people and if those outcomes are in line with the kind of contract that was there oh yeah in the manifesto, people say, yes, they've delivered against their promises. We're happy. We'll re-elect them. And you go round and round and round. But just in case that doesn't work, there yeah. are all sorts of checks and balances built in. So uh, actually, Parliament is is in itself a check and a balance. And we've seen yeah. recently the House of Lords has, has been... Uh, uh, an effective so far uh, check and balance against some some of the worst ideas that the government has come up let's, with. Let's just uh, let's just um, mention that for a moment before we come back to the way the system is supposed to function and whether it is functioning or not. House of Lords, you may, these are two things that I think people find incredibly dull. One is the House of Lords, <laughs> uh, and the other is this this thing that you referred to just now called the Internal Market Bill. That sounds like so hmm. boring. But both of those things together are actually rather dynamic at the moment, aren't they? Well, they're very dynamic. That Internal Market Bill, uh, you remember, it's part of the process of getting ready for Brexit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the idea is to make sure that there won't be uh, barriers within the UK, that, for example, England and Scotland will be able to trade but perhaps most most importantly england and northern ireland will be yeah, able to trade yeah. seamlessly yeah. Uh, the problem it, there are two problems with the bill one is that actually it goes against some of the provisions in the withdrawal agreement and the good friday agreement so that mm -hmm. if they were to implement it and 
take all the powers that they would have given themselves, peace in Northern Ireland would be under threat. And the House of Lords has picked picked up this point explicitly. But the other point is at least as fundamental, which is that it's a real attack on the rule of law. It's an attack on some of these checks and balances. So, for example, if it were to go through without any amendments, Mm. it would say that the provision, the powers under that bill would not be subject to judicial review. So the government could then behave in a way that is in other senses illegal, but because of this bill being itself um, beyond scrutiny, those wow. acts uh, are not in scrutiny. And of so, course, if you do that for one bill, yeah, you could do yeah. it for other bills as well. Yeah. So you could essentially set up a whole series of legislation ah. which gave you enormous powers, which couldn't be challenged. Well, again, I mean, so this, is pro- not, this, is, this, is, this is not the first time I've said this. I mean, I'm probably getting quite dull, actually, but sort of repeating this. But this is not what people voted for. You know, if you voted for Brexit, you voted for independence to bring legislation back, make it more of a democracy, grassroots, all the rest of that. What I'm hearing from from you, Mark, is that that actually is the very opposite of what they're doing. Well, yes. And I have to say the the Tories ran a very clever campaign because they said uh, before the last election, they said all the sorts of things that you have been saying, Mm. but they wrote down in the manifesto all the sorts of things that I've been saying. So they did actually... Yeah, they did actually threaten in the small print that they would take a look at judicial review and they would take a look at uh, the rights of organisations to protest and all manner of uh, these things were not explicitly spelled out. Silly me for not reading a 150 page manifesto before before I voted and millions of other people too. Dear but what idea. you should what you should have been reading is the ninety nine percent website because we did have an article on that oh, right. uh, very point that highlighted right. uh, highlighted precisely those dangers. It, okay. it also, despite the fact that they were promising to spend, spend, spend before the election, uh, it also had in there some weasel words that would allow them to cut, cut, cut if and when <sighs> they want to, because. It talked about balancing the books and all these other nonsenses that we've we've covered yeah, in some of the yeah, other sessions. Yeah, that well that I've learnt about um, through through listening mm. to you. So let's go back to this this diagram here, which is a, yeah. a good analysis really of how things are supposed to work. And it is. Have, so you, go on. Yeah, we just 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 take a few examples. So we talked yeah. about the courts. You know, yeah. uh, we saw. Quite recently, how important it is that the courts can challenge the government when the government tried illegally to prorogue parliament because they didn't want parliamentary scrutiny. And um, the Good Law Project took uh, the government to court and uh, argued, I thought, very convincingly that if they were allowed to prorogue parliament whenever they liked, they could prorogue the day after the election, they could reconvene parliament the, the day before, and they could go... With, uh, they could operate without parliamentary scrutiny for the entire term. And luckily, their lordships found that that was not an acceptable way to behave. So the power of judicial review to stop uh, what could ultimately become dictatorial behaviour is a very, very important safeguard. But that one's under threat at mm-hmm. the moment. Mm-hmm. The House of Lords, the powers of the House of Lords are under threat and the composition more so because they've talked about stuffing the House of Lords with what they've called Brexit heroes, uh, right. which would be, in other words, people who would be uh, loyal to whatever the government says. Uh, they um Uh, you've seen a sort of clear out of a lot of the top talent within the civil service, which both um, makes it uh, harder because they've lost so much skill and experience. Some hugely experienced civil servants uh, have gone. Well, there's no, I mean, you know, this is a great time for them to go, isn't it? We've only got, you know, Brexit negotiations to deal with and COVID and the consequences of Brexit. I mean, we're not going to need good managers at all over the next six months, are we? Well, exactly. But also, it's, it's even worse than that because, you know, they have very talented people in the, the less senior ranks, not so experienced, but just as talented. But if you if your boss has just been fired because he dared to argue with Dominic Cummings or dared to point out to Michael Gove that his latest pet theory might not actually work, 
you've been promoted to that position and they come up with another daft idea do you say no minister or do you say yes minister and you know do your best to make this yeah. hopeless idea yeah. do reality? you want a job or not basically very exactly. simple yeah. let's just go back so, to so, to uh, to your your diagram and look at um look at things this is how it's supposed to work right this is how it's supposed to work and, and i won't go through every single point here but um you know, let's take peaceful protesters that's that's an interesting one because you know in the last couple of years extinction rebellion um has successfully raised the profile of the climate emergency and, and sure. indeed you know the phrase climate emergency yeah. is now something which most governments recognize absolutely and that was i you know it's hard to say for certain but i think uh between them greta thunberg and extinction rebellion are probably responsible so peaceful protest is what has made that very very important recognition yeah yeah uh, come into government policy in many mm. governments around the world mm. but this government has talked about making extinction rebellion uh considering it as a crime or an organized crime organization terrorist organization yeah i mean this is yeah. this is i i don't i don't know so, i can't think of anyone who has slightly libertarian tendencies who can support what's going on I really can't. I mean, I can understand people of the fascist persuasion thinking that this is a good idea. But if you are right of centre and you've got libertarian tendencies, why would you support these things now? Well, I think if you're a fundamentalist, <clears throat> you just think that anything that's an obstacle has to be got rid of. Um, right. Right. You know, it's clear they yeah. talk about moving fast and breaking things uh, which yeah. they, i think is, is facebook's motto but you've heard people yeah. in government adopting that mindset yeah. yes we might break things we might break the constitution we might uh, break all manner of things but that's the point you know we want to upset the apple cart we want to create a new order of things so let's just have a look at uh, how, how they're breaking things okay so this is how things uh, are yeah, supposed exactly. to operate and this is what's uh, under threat right uh, uh, this, this is the, exactly these are the things which are under threat so uh, you know do we have a free press well in a sense it's free but it's actually controlled as we saw the graph the other day almost yeah. entirely by uh, offshore billionaires yep. who have market fundamentalist tendencies so that's uh, not really effective for us um, we have seen um, the civil service being attacked and therefore not in the position to provide the kind of advice that they would normally provide the courts are under attack we talked about that whistleblowers are under attack peaceful protesters are under attack uh, even voters their ability to vote has is under attack because if you have an election where one side is able to uh, deploy uh, what in effect are psychological uh, yeah. operations techniques yeah, yeah, against yeah. the voting population yeah. and convince them surround vulnerable voters with a wall of misinformation mm. so that of course they will vote according to the information they see and if everywhere they look they see mm. information that says your life is is terrible because the eu is destroying it mm. then you know if, if you hear nothing else for for two years and then there's a referendum of mm. course you're likely to to vote that way it's it's that's, not that's irrational what's happened. It's a, that's what's happened it's, this, this, it's a this, rational this response to Downing misinformation Street has has the psychological warfare unit it has done for some time hasn't it it's the nudge absolutely unit. and they but they, i mean mr cummings's victory really was was predicated on that it was predicated on well, it was, behavioral uh, science uh, uh, and data mining and he just did it a lot better than anybody else but the fact is we've been manipulated into this Oh, absolutely. Yes. And it wasn't just him, you know, uh, the role of Cambridge Analytica and uh, some of these associated organizations was highlighted by, among others, Carol Cadwallader, uh, who did some very good research into that. Oh, yeah. And you yeah. know, it's pretty scary stuff. It really is like declaring, uh, applying military grade psy psyops onto your own population. So yeah. so even the, the, that most fundamental of checks and balances, the ability to have a free and fair election, even that's under threat. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So look, if you want to do something about it, 
have a look at Mark's book, 99%. It's on Kindle right now. And paperback too. And share it. I think that's the most important thing, actually. Because although they may deploy, you know, centralised psychological warfare weapons, how, how, can we, how can we even be saying that in, in a democracy such, such, as, such as Britain? Although they may be doing that, they can't control what you say to your friends and neighbours. So please share um, the book. And please leave any comments and questions for Mark. Even for me, but I won't be able to answer. Maybe I can tell you about my shirt or something like that. In the comment here, and um, we'll see you tomorrow.